Solving radical equations and inequalities. Here are the state standards listed. Your success criteria, identify radical equations and inequalities. Solve radical equations and inequalities. Identify extraneous solutions of radical equations. And solve real life problems involving radical equations. A couple of vocabulary terms you need to know. Radical equation. So we've already been looking at radicals, but now we're going to look at radical equations. So now we're going to be solving um, with an equal sign. A radical equation contains radicals that have variables in the radicands. An example of a radical equation is 2 square root of x plus 1 equals 4. An extraneous solution. Rising each side of an equation to the same exponent may introduce solutions that are not solutions of the original equation. These solutions are called extraneous solutions. So remember when you have certain numbers, like you're taking the square root, and to solve these, we're going to have to square both sides. Remember when you have a variable there, the variable it represents an unknown number. And if you have a number that's squared, any number squared is going to be positive. So like 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is also 4. So sometimes when you're solving these, you're going to get an equation, uh, an extraneous solution, which means you solved it correctly, but when you plug it back in to check it, it doesn't work. So you always have to check your answers to make sure your solutions are true solutions. Example 1, solving radical equations. All right, before we get started, let's look at the key idea, solving radical equations. First thing you need to do is isolate the radical on one side of the equation. A part, you can see it's 2 times the square root, so you need to divide both sides by 2 to isolate that radical first. B part has a cube root expression, and then minus 1 is outside the cube root, so you would need to add 1 to both sides of the equation to isolate that cube root first. So step one, very easy, isolate the radical first. Raise each side of the equation to the same exponent to eliminate the radical and obtain a linear, quadratic, or other polynomial equation. All right, so if you have a square root, you're gonna raise each side to the squared term. And if you have a cube root, you would raise each side to the third power, cube it. Step three, solve the resulting equation using techniques you learned in previous chapters. So inverse operations, basically. All right, so a part, we already said that we're going to divide both sides by two. So we're going to have the square root of x plus one. Four divided by two is two. Then I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. The square root and the squared term cancel. So I've got x plus one is equal to and then 2 squared is 4. Subtract 1, x equals 3. So that's my solution. Again, you need to plug it in to check it to make sure it works. So 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 equals 4. So that is a true solution. That works. All right, b part, cube root of 2x minus 9, and then minus 1 equals 2. So the first thing we need to do is add 1 to both sides. So we're going to have the cube root of 2x minus 9. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I have a cube root, so this time I have to cube both sides. So I'm going to have 2x minus 9 equals... And then 3 cubed is 27. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Add 9 to both sides. 2x equals 27 plus 9 is 36. I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm going to divide by 2. 36 divided by 2 is 18. All right, again, I need to plug that in and check it. So take 18 and plug it into here. 2 times 18 is 36. 36 minus 9 is 27. The cube root of 27 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 equals 2. So again, 
very important to check it but it doesn't take long but it does ensure that you got a true solution example two modeling real life the mean sustained wind velocity in meters per second of a hurricane is modeled by V of P. When P is the air pressure in millibars at the center of the hurricane. Estimate the air pressure at the center of the hurricane when the mean sustained wind velocity is 54.5 meters per second. All right, so it tells us the mean sustained wind velocity is modeled by this function here. So we're going to have V of P equals 6.3 square root of 1013 minus P, where P is the air pressure in millibars at the center of the hurricane. So it says estimate the air pressure. So we're looking for P, which is the air pressure at the center of the hurricane when the mean sustained wind velocity is 54.5 meters per second. So the wind velocity is 54.5, so we're going to plug that in for our V of P. So we're going to have 6.3 times the square root of 1013 minus P. And then just like before, we need to isolate our radical first. So we're going to divide both sides by 6.3. And that's going to leave us the square root of 1013 minus P on the right. And on the other side, We're going to have 54.5 divided by 6.3. And that's going to give me about 8.65. So I'm going to round that to 8.65. And then I'm going to have to square both sides to get rid of my square root. I'm going to take 8.65 and I'm going to square that number. That's going to give me about 74.8. All right, so now I need to solve. 4p. This is a positive 1013, so I'm going to subtract 1013 from both sides. So I'm going to have uh, 74.8 minus 1013. It's going to give me a negative number. So it's going to give me negative 938.2, negative 938.2, and that's going to equal negative P. And then we don't need a negative variable. We need to divide by negative 1. So divide the whole thing by negative 1, and P equals 938.2. All right, so that tells us that the air pressure at the center of the hurricane is equal to 938.2, and that was in millibars. So I don't really know what a millibar is, but um, based on this formula, you can conclude that the air pressure at the center of the hurricane is about 938 or 938.2 millibars. We did round, so that is an approximation, but it is about 938 millibars. All right, so it says to understand how extraneous solutions can in be introduced, consider the equation, the square root of x equals negative three. This equation has no real solution. However, you obtain x equals nine after squaring both sides. 
So again, that's just a little example of extraneous solution. Or better yet, where an extraneous solution would come from when you have a radical equation. Example three, solving an equation with an extraneous solution. So we can see that the uh, square root is already isolated on the right hand side. So we can just go ahead and square both sides. All right, when we square the left side, we have a binomial squared. Here's a common mistake. People want to square the X and square the one and forget the middle term. Remember when you have a binomial, it's the same binomial times itself. So x plus 1 times x plus 1. So you have to do distributive property or FOIL. So we're going to have x squared. We're going to have x times 1 and then x times 1 again. So we've got 2x in the middle. And then 1 squared is 1. So if you forget this middle term, then you've already messed up. On the right side, we've got a square root squared, so that undoes itself. So we have 7x plus 15. And then we have to set the equation equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 7x from both sides. So we're going to have x squared. 2 minus 7 is going to be negative 5x. And then I can go ahead and subtract 15 from both sides. And 1 minus 15 is negative 14. Now, hopefully you haven't forgot what you learned in previous lessons. We have a quadratic equation. So in order to solve this, we can either factor or do the quadratic formula. So let's see if we can factor this expression. That's the easiest. So x times x is x squared. We need to know what multiplies to give us negative 14 and adds to give us negative 9. So we have 1 and 14 or 2 and 7. 2 and 7 is what we need to get 5. So we're going to have 2 and 7. We need a negative number when we multiply, which means we got one positive and one negative. The middle number tells us which one is negative. The bigger number has to be negative in order to get a negative 5 in the middle. Now, make sure you check x times x is x squared, x times negative 7, negative 7x plus 2x is negative 5x, and then 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. It's very quick and easy to check. That makes sure that you have your binomials um, correct and that it multiplies out and gives you the correct signs when needed. All right, now from here you set each one equal to 0 and solve. So we've got x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2, x equals negative 2. And then we do the same thing, x minus 7 equals 0. Add 7 to solve, so x equals 7. Now, very important, we need to check to make sure it's not extraneous. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. All right, let's plug negative 2 in the other side. Negative 2 times 7, negative 14. Negative 14 plus 15 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So does 1 equal negative 1? It does not. So this one is an extraneous solution. This one is not a solution. So you can go ahead and mark it out. All right, let's check 7 to see if 7 is a solution. So 7 plus 1 is 8. On the other side, we need to see... Um, plug 7 into the square root. So we're going to have 7 times 7, which is 49. 49 plus 15 is 64. The square root of 64 is 8. 8 equals 8. This one is a solution. So example 3, we solved and got two solutions, but only one is an actual solution. So your solution is x equals 7.